Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Uh, if you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. We actually have 20 of us here in uh, Westboro. But this is not about elder law. This is about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've been to one of my presentations before in one of the senior centers around, you, you know that Frank and Mary uh, uh, have three kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And Frank and Mary's goal is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. Their kids have now kind of moved on. And they don't want to move on. They like it here. So um, the, the point of this show is to help Frank and Mary and you, if you identify with them, know the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about if you just want to stay here for the rest of your life. And so with me is my wonderful co-host, Shelby Marshall. Uh, if, if We've been doing this just like it's been a long time now, like a year or something that we've been doing this show. Um, because she's the one who, you know, as a selectman, she, you see her on TV all the time, but she also just knows everybody. She's got that big smile, you know, and everybody likes her. So she finds these great guests and, and, uh, whom do you have today? Shelby? Yeah. Hi, Arthur. Good morning. It's so great to see you again. And hi to our viewers. It's, I, I feel like we're, we're tethered through technology to make connections in the community and, in these times of COVID, uh, those those connections could never be more important. So um, really happy that Westboro TV helps us to bring the show to, to uh, those that want to watch near and far. Um, so today's guest, um, I consider her a friend, um, uh, but she's the very talented Lisa Borchetta. Uh, hi, Lisa. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, nice to be here. Uh, so I'll introduce Lisa, um, and um, but she's here to talk about a new uh, and upcoming organization here in Westboro called Westboro Neighbors. And uh, so Lisa will tell us all about that. But Lisa uh, has a long resume. Thank thankfully, I don't have to like read it, actually, but I'm going to sort of uh, touch on the high points. So she's a 20-year resident of Westboro, has raised two wonderful sons. Just before we started taping, we were getting the update on how well they're doing, and what a proud mom she is. Um, Lisa has sort of two tracks in her professional uh, kind of work as it relates to aging, which again, not a bad word, we're all aging. I'm older now than I was uh, 20 minutes ago. Um, and um, Lisa has worked um, in kind of direct service or hands-on care as a mental health counselor, as a certified life coach and in training and instruction and then certainly in the areas of sort of managing an administration um, of a community group uh, community-based nonprofit, and other groups so really has um, spent a lot of time across her professional career working with those who are aging and in sort of human services social services lisa i hope i did your introduction justice Great, great summary. Thank you. <laughs> great, great. So Lisa and I met actually through uh, Westboro Connects. We've had them on as our guests several times. Um, and uh, Lisa uh, was one of the instrumental individuals and one of the keynote speakers, not the keynote, one of the, what do you call it if you're not the keynote, the subnote? Right. <laughs> the harmonic, one of the harmonic speakers. There you go. Um, at, um, you'll remember uh, Westboro Connect sponsored the um, uh, Aging Enjoyably in Westboro event uh, that was well attended. We had guest speakers um, and Lisa was one of them. Um, and so um, one of her visions when we first met was about creating this group, Westboro Neighbors. And so I, uh, they're up and running officially. She's one of the founding members of them. Uh, uh, of the group, excuse me. And so Lisa, welcome and tell us what's going, what is, what is Westboro Neighbors? Um, thank you very much for that lovely introduction. So um, Westboro Neighbors is an emerging uh, organization here in Westboro. And uh, it is an organization based on the village model, which I can talk a little bit about, to help people age in place in their homes. And it's a program um, where we will offer services, programs, and opportunities to be involved and use your skills, talents, and interests um, to create an organization to support aging in place. Um, and in particular, uh, we're interested in incorporating an intergenerational component uh, in that because I believe that um, it's best for everyone if we're connected across the lifespan. So, so what you, you use, you use the term village model. What is that? 
Um, so the village model is a, um, really came out of an organization that started in Boston, in Beacon Hill, um, about 20 years ago, when a group of neighbors and friends decided that they wanted to um, age in place and stay in their homes. They lived in Beacon Hill, they loved where they were, and they wanted to figure out what could they put together to help them be able to stay at home. Um, and so what they ended up creating was Beacon Hill Village, um, which got national and international attention for being this very new um, way of looking at aging and having people who themselves were growing older figure out how to do that and support, uh, support each other and doing that in a neighborhood way. They had so much publicity and interest in this idea that they helped to seed a, another organization so that somebody else could answer uh, some of those questions called the Village to Village Network, um, which supports communities that are looking to um, create a village uh, in their area. And there are now almost a, a, like 150 running and another 100 or so in development across the country and internationally, Japan and Finland and England and across and across the US. So, and okay. each one is completely different because okay. it depends on the community. Right, right. So, so for Frank and Mary, who um, you know think Boston might be a great place to visit with their kids, but it's much too busy for them, and they love Westboro. Um, mm -hmm. How? So, so it, it's not you know when we say a village, it's not a building or a cluster of buildings. It's you use the word it's a neighborhood. So if we think of Westboro, it has various neighborhoods within it, um, mm -hmm. but in and of itself, one might consider it a neighborhood. Westboro, the mm -hmm. neighborhood. Right. So, right, right. so what are kind of some of the services that uh, maybe Beacon Hill or other villages sort of um, uh, um, coalesce around or the needs or uh, activities? Give us kind of a feel of what it would be right. like to be in a village. So, so uh, Beacon Hill, which is sort of the, the granddaddy, if you will, of the, of the group is a pretty robust organization. They have about 400 members. And while it started in the Beacon Hill neighborhood, um, uh, it expanded to incorporate other downtown neighborhoods. So it's now Back Bay and downtown and, you know, the south and the west end, et cetera. Um, and they provide programs, services, and opportunities. So the programs for them, because they're in the city, are incredibly robust. There's opportunities to go to the theater, or go to the symphony, or... Um, go out to dinner or go on a studio tour or um, something. And, and our, um, I should disclose, I, my full-time day job right now is doing member services for Beacon Hill Village, but I'm not here to represent them. Um, but I certainly can speak about them. Um, but it but, gives you the, the real understanding of what it is in nuts and bolts, which is great. Exactly. Right, exactly. I, I um, was lucky enough to see a position open up there last year. And I thought, what better way to learn about villages than to um, than to work at the first village? So, um, so the programs are very robust and very much driven by a committee of members who decide what they want um, and what the kinds of things they want to do. And then there's a a programming coordinator who really makes it all happen. Okay. Um, the services are what I uh, help with, and so that can be anything from a very extensive information and referral network. Um, so if somebody calls up and they are looking to speak to an elder care uh, mm -hmm. attorney, elder law attorney, uh, and they are looking for a referral, or if they're looking for a homemaker, or a home health aide, or a, um, a tech assistant, or okay. you name it, you know, yeah. <laughs> you name it, um, they can ask. And, and so we have uh, vetted providers who we've interviewed and, um, who've sent in an application, had a background checked, and you know we checked their references. Who are on a vetted list of people that we can refer, and also folks that are member referred. So, so we make a sure. distinction there. May not have gone through the whole yep. uh, the whole Kishnayas, but um, we also help give them easier access to the city has taxi coupons. We do um, uh, rides. Um, we have our, do have some drivers that we actually employ. Um, there is, 
um, we do grocery list shopping, okay. grocery uh, trips to the grocery store and other kinds of rides. Part of the thing though is, is that in the city, there isn't a senior center like there is in Westboro and sure. like there is in a lot of small communities. So the services that would, would happen in Westboro really depend on what Westboro's needs are and they're gonna be very different. So the kind, some of the kinds of things that Beacon Hill Village provides, we would need here because our senior center uh, already helps with those things. Um, so each, each community is different. And then the opportunity piece is there's a board of directors who absolutely run what the village is and what they do, um, including some of the founding members who have been you know, around for 20 years or so. Um, there is a, a program uh, program committee. There's the there's the committee for member services. They can volunteer in the office. They can run our big fundraiser that we do every year. They could um, help other members with things. Um, so there's a a lot of different opportunities for getting involved, staying active, and uh, contributing of your talents and skills. Um, well, and I love I love that idea of you know contributing right. So really, kind of continuing to say this is what what I want. This is what my neighbors need. You know, this is really kind of being active participants in sort of that that you, you know the your aging experience within a community, um, right. as opposed to sort of passively you know kind of waiting of what what might the city or the town or my building offer to me. So I I love that that engagement and um and i think particularly as we see the baby boomer generation aging we are going to see more of that this is what i expect and what i what i demand and i mean i say that in a positive light as opposed to maybe prior generations who kind of culturally just had a very different kind of approach to the aging process and in their engagement in community um, and, right. and, and interestingly shelby i think that's one of the things I, I know, so I've dealt with some of the, some of the, these communities and I know, well, a guy named Frank Caro who had done the Cambridge one. Mm -hmm. And one of the interesting things that he would always talk about was the important role of the village as a, as a separate nonprofit in act, actually advocating before town officials, before, or in this case, before city officials to, to advocate for things that really it's much, very difficult for a town official, like the head of the senior center, you know, or the council, to advocate for because they're kind of in the system. You know, they're kind of they're they're a whole other set of political constraints. They have to answer to you and all the selectmen and the oh, town God. manager and yeah. stuff. You know, and 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 you know, whereas an outside group can go to a town, can go to the selectmen's meeting, can go to town meeting, can be really transformative. So it's it's a, a wonderful model for especially for seniors who kind of by definition are the one group that tend to have more time on their hands now than everybody else, right? Because right. all of the spouses or everybody's working, you know, and, and to, to be really not only providing for their own services, but really advocating. So it's just mm -hmm. wonderful that you, you, that you folks, I'm just excited, Lisa, that you decided to, you know, really push this and to try to move it in this direction. This is a big deal. Thanks. Yeah, it's exciting. It is exciting. I'm I'm excited about it. So, so Lisa, you. tell us. So let's kind of bring it now, now into Westboro. Um, yeah. So you've formed Westboro Neighbors. Um, mm -hmm. I know you've had a couple of meetings. What I would imagine a lot of it has been education, kind of like what you've shared with us here. Right. And and you know, transparently, you know, for our viewers, you know, the hope here is, and we'll put Lisa's contact information up um, as, as part of this, as we always do. So if you're interested in talking with Lisa more about what is Westboro Neighbors, you have ideas, um, you want to be involved somehow, uh, we encourage you to do that. Um, but Lisa, where where's Westboro Neighbors now and where do you see it going? So kind of two questions. So we're absolutely still in the development stage. Um, I think, um, you know, as, as you noted, I had presented last November, but I actually didn't mention Westboro Neighbors in the presentation intentionally, though I did show up in the gymnasium afterwards to collect some names, because what I wanted to talk about was creating intentional community and our taking responsibility for creating the community that we wanna see. Um, and I think that's a big piece about the membership is having that agency to use your skills and talents to create what you want to happen here. Um, it's taken a while to kind of get this uh, information out there. 
Um, and with the whole COVID-19 piece, um, we sort of suspended in-person meetings. So I am uh, just now really starting to form a steering committee uh, with other folks who are, who are committed to this idea and committed to the work of doing the steps we need to do to kind of become a nonprofit uh, and incorporate and all that, all that uh, good stuff. So luckily this uh, Beacon Hill Village sort of seeded that village to village network and they have, we've been a member for two years uh, now um, and they have all sorts of wonderful supportive information to kind of help you work through the steps that you need to do in order to do that. So this, so we're really meeting as a steering committee um, and uh, looking at how, how we want to do this. Um, what are all of the things that we need to do to kind of get that together? So that's one piece. The other piece is getting, still getting the information out to folks to let them know uh, that this is out there um, and to talk to people. So it's, it's still very much an emerging um, organization, but not yet, um, not yet, you know, fully formed. Yeah, shall we say. yeah, yeah. So great, a great opportunity for folks like Frank and Mary and their friends um, to be part of uh, creating a vision. I mean, we often hear, um, you know, just being candid. We, to your point, we have our senior center, but there are so many people that feel like. I'm not sure that's the fit for me. I think right. sometimes that's a that's a judgment and they haven't experienced it. And and so I would encourage right. them to go and experience some of the programs um, you know, post-COVID. But there are some people where it's still it's not that right fit for them. So yeah. so and when we think of people that uh, might be part of Westboro neighbors, I'm I'm gonna just check my assumption here that I'm thinking it's someone that's like you know, 50 to 60 and on up. Is that a fair uh, That's right. age group? Okay. Yeah. So it's sort of a 50 plus. So okay. the way we describe it is um, uh, emerging organization program services and opportunities for involvement for uh, people 50 plus uh, that incorporates an intergenerational component. So the members, um, because they are membership organizations, uh, would be 50 plus. Um, yeah. And when you think about that, you know, if you go up to 100, uh, you know, you're talking about a number of different generations of people who are in very different places. Sure. Um, and not just number wise, but I think part of uh, Westboro Neighbors is sort of looking at and educating around our assumptions about aging um, mm -hmm. and looking at our own uh, biases about what, our, what we assume it means when you get older. So it's not just about needing to um, provide services for older adults. But there's a lot of people who have a lot to give in one way or another. <laughs> and, uh, absolutely. Um, so so I, I hit that magical number um, that I can actually become a member of, okay. of this um, in May. And um, a classic example where I'm still raising a child, whereas my contemporaries of the same age or slightly older may not be, right? Their kids are now, you know, away at, at school. So um, so I'm, I, I can't wait to sign up. So, um, so you have that, you have my commitment here. Um, uh, so, but, so Shelby, let, yeah. let, me, let me ask Lisa. So, and I'm sure that you're one of the goals in, the way, in, in what you're doing right now is to be getting a, a lot of people's ideas be kind of in terms of where, where to move this. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, mm -hmm. from your perspective, based on things that you've seen in other communities and, and kind of applying them in your own, because you've obviously spent a lot of time thinking about this, you know, mm -hmm. from your perspective, can you talk a little bit about how, how it might, how it might go as far as you're concerned? Yeah. Not so that you're driving it, but it, 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 I think it's helpful for people to just mm -hmm. get a concept. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to see is an organization where programmatically, we are offering a rich array of programs that interest people. And, and I hear you, even people who are, are of a certain age may not want to see themselves or don't see themselves um, because of our own internalized ageism uh, going to a senior center and or it just doesn't may or may not fit in terms of the programming they would like to see. So I would like to see uh, the kind of robust pro programming that is offered through uh, Beacon Hill Village or other organizations in terms of uh, interesting lectures and adult educational opportunities. 
artistic um, possibilities, um, various trips and um, going to museums and um, having people in and doing various groups. So personal growth uh, kinds of groups and other creativity groups and other affinity groups. So, so our, so the programs in Boston, there are some that are organized by the office and are led by usually somebody outside, but there's also a number of affinity groups uh, for folks. So, so in a community like this, uh, where a lot of the ways that we care for each other often centers around either personal connections or, or um, uh, if you have a connection to a faith community uh, here, a lot of, of those communities find ways to help and take care for uh, of each other's members and also provide uh, programming. But I'd like to see something that is more open and uh, so that the entire town uh, knows about it and provides chances for maybe somebody who is older to help a new mother um, or a new, a new family with new children or um, uh, doing tutoring for somebody who needs help in math if you were an engineer or whatever. So, so that kind of back and forth uh, coordination, hopefully um, I would love to see uh, a coordination with the school system uh, as well. Um, and with supporting other uh, other organizations and referring. So when people don't know where to go to get a piece of information, if it's something that someone at the senior center can help with, say, there's this program here, you can take advantage of this. Or, you know, just getting information and being able to provide that sort of information to other members. I think when Beacon Hill Village was created, the internet didn't exist. You couldn't Google, you know, um, hairdresser within five miles kind of thing. Um, it just wasn't happening. Um, so some of that isn't as necessary now. Um, so I think that it would be different how it, how it looked here. And certainly community-wise, it's different. So one of the things, not to digress, but, but there's a village down on the Cape, and there's a few villages on the Cape, but there's one that's primarily they just do rides. They're all volunteer members. Um, and they volunteer and they help one another. Um, and they mostly just do rides because it's hard to get around on the Cape. There's one out in Western Mass that is a hub and spoke model. So there's a central village, but then there's a lot of small towns that are you know, sort of working in together with a, an area, um, the Berkshire uh, Community College there. And they have an OLLI program, which is an Osher Lifelong Learning Institute program for education, uh, for opportunities for older adults, and they're coordinating also with them. So that's another model. And, you know, Westboro is a small town. We're not as small as those towns, but there might be a point where it seems like, gee, maybe we should see if the folks in Southboro or Northboro or Hopkinton or whatever are interested in joining in with us. But for now, um, we're still, you know, mostly working with just Westboro. Thank you. Yeah, you yeah. know, Arthur, I thought you, you're you really thinking about this. Um, I love the idea, first of all, Lisa, thank you for reminding me of intentional community. You've used that before in our conversations and I, I, you know, I, I think that, that that term says a lot um, about the ability to kind of guide and, and kind of choose your path um, um, and how you expect to age uh, here in Westboro. But Arthur, I love this idea that, you know, it's a group that's outside of the town services. Of government. Of yeah. government, yeah. And as much as I love it um, and, and think we have great services, you, you know, it, it, it creates a, a group that then can advocate for a, additional services, right? Yeah. Or be a voice for people that, um, uh, you know, need a voice. So, and not to say it's a political organization, that's not what I'm saying, I'm just, but we're really speaking to, hey, you know, we, we really, th this is what this mass of people, you know, need and want. So uh, that's an excellent point, but not surprising because you're a smart guy, so. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just an, it's, it's, it, it, it just struck me when he mentioned it, because I never thought about that, this yeah. notion of, so I remember one of the things that they advocated for was, was among other things, they were doing sidewalks. Of course, it's a very yep. urban area. It's Cambridge. Right. They said, of course, what they were doing, I mean, they were doing sidewalks and it was all the seniors that were advocating for it. But of course, it was helping everybody with disabilities. You know, it was helping everybody, but it was being driven 
because it was a lot of seniors, you know, and people really listened to seniors. So it was a, just, so I think the point is well taken. That was a wonderful summary of the possibilities, Lisa. This is really okay. something, Shelby. Yeah. This is really no, something. So, so Lisa, you'll go ahead. Arthur, I was just going to say, but of course we always do this, you know, we're always doing it and we're chatty and then the time goes by. And so I want to, I want to, I'm looking at the time and I'm saying, Shelby, I want to know from you um, whether there are particular things that people need to know about right now, because we always end our show with that, right? Is there a particular emergency thing before we go? And then we yeah. and then we want to give a big round of applause to our great guest. What a wonderful thing. This Absolutely. Is thank you. So, so yeah, Lisa, thank you for joining us. Um, we'll have you back as Neighbors kind of continues yeah. to evolve. So yeah. let us okay. know when you want to be a guest again, please. Um, sure. We'll follow you closely. Uh, yeah, just some key things coming up. Um, so um, across sep our September shows, maybe into early October, still working on the dates, we will have... Um, uh, Representative Gregoire on again. Um, she she won the primary um, for our uh, for um, the district um, or the precinct here, and she'll be on. She'll be running against um, uh, Selectman Syed Hashmi, who's running as an independent on the representative ticket. So we're going to have both of them on two different shows, and Arthur and I are going to ask them some hard line questions um, about why they should be uh, representing Westboro. So they will be our guests. I'm hoping to have our town manager on to talk about an upcoming special uh, town meeting, which will be taking place on Tuesday, the 29th. And um, more immediately um, at our uh, next couple of board of selectmen meeting, uh, we're going to be talking about, Lisa, you'll be interested in this, in the VIA program, which is a transportation kind of based uh, pilot that's taking place. It's an extension of the WRTA and is going to help people not only get to and from like the T, the, the train station to their work, but get around town in a very economical way. So I'm hoping to maybe have them on as our guest as well. And uh, certainly Frank and Mary will want to understand that because if you have one Absolutely. car, this might be an option for you and, um, and that sort of thing. So, um, uh, and um you know, lots going on. Pay attention to what's going on in the Selectman agendas. Um, lots of content. We'll be talking about road management um, programs, and our police chief will be giving an update on policies and procedures and the accreditation process. So, Lisa, you can see why all why Frank and Mary and all their friends watch this show. I mean, this is you got to know what's to go with, know what's going on in Westboro. You got to watch this show. <laughs> so, thank you yes. very very much. It was just a pleasure, and good luck. Good luck on this. This is just a sure. wonderful. Thank wonderful. you. Just wonderful. And Shelby, as usual, you and keep bringing these great people on. Yes, Lisa. Oh, I thought you were I was just wondering if you would like me to share either uh, some contact information or if folks are interested yep. or if you'll. We'll put it on the screen, Lisa. We'll so put it on the screen. So okay. send, send us that information. We'll have it the whole time that you're talking, right? Yep. They'll be, they'll be, they'll <laughs> okay. have a little blinking thing. <laughs> okay, great. So Thank you. Do, do that for us. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thanks Thank again, you so Shelby. Much for the opportunity. No, thank you. This is really wonderful what you're doing. And Shelby, thank you very much. You bet. And folks, we hope you enjoy it. Uh, and uh, we will look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.